Fine. He is a name, but they do it by himself. I was watching the Housewives of Atlanta. Huh? Every now and then we all digress. Um, but they were talking about how they were self-made. And I was thinking to myself, nobody's self-made. I was getting ready to say, absolutely, none of us get there by ourselves. Uh, right. Nobody so does. That's interesting. Okay. And so young people find them. ideas. Older people oh, have right. ideas. The key thing came, is to get ideas is to having Detroit. collaborative, where you can get with people who can launch the idea and turn it into money. Like the five-hour energy drink, a group collaborative. So coming together is really the, is what, it, it, it's kind of the next level for a culture to, to migrate to and to <laughs> progress to, is that we, we're not doing this for ourselves. We've done as much as we can by ourselves. Now let's come together as a group. I was watching the Mandela movie again last night, and he talked about how young people just want to run out and do things by themselves. And he held his hand up, and he said, all these fingers represent individual efforts to do things. But then he clenched his fist, and he said, when we come together, it's a tight group, and we can do so much more together than we could ever do individually. And that's where we are as a people. We're at a point in our history where that we've done as much as we can do by ourselves. The next progression for us is going to be together. All the things we can do together as a group. And Ms. Gaddis, I don't know if you've gone downtown and saw the new development models for Detroit. When you say development models, what are you talking about? Housing, the, you know, once they finish the Little Caesars Stadium and the fact that Little Caesars is going to redo the world headquarters here in Detroit. What the downtown, midtown, area is going to look like in the next five years no i haven't seen that it, it gets anybody's heartbeat up it's, it's phenomenal what's planned and what's getting ready to happen to the downtown we're going to be a downtown like no other we're going to have five major sports teams downtown no other no one has that we'll have all the facilities needed to be at for the olympic games in the next five years Yes, Every facility that you, a world-class city needs to have in order to be at the Olympic Games, we will have all those facilities in the next five years. It's okay. amazing what the downtown life is going to be like. And you think about major cities and you watch a basketball game and you see all the people standing in Cleveland on the outside looking at the big screen, they didn't buy a ticket. There's areas down there for them just to socialize, to come down. The tickets are all sold out on the inside of the arena. These people just come down and hang out. It, yeah. It's just amazing what the plans for Detroit are, but guess how that happened? A group of people got together and formed a collaborative. And they made a decision that we're going to do something for this city that will last the next 100 years. And that's what we have to do as a group. That's the next level of evolution, is you have to come together as a group and say, I've, I've got the car I want, I live in the house I want, what can I do beyond this? as a group to launch the next group of young people or older people who have these wonderful ideas that you're talking about. I think they also said, what do we do for ourselves? You know I, think they just, just I think that they found the right place to do it. Uh, but uh, this wasn't, you know, one of those altruist, altruistic things. What, actually, uh, they I mean, do well. I can, I can be a win-win for everyone. And some what it is. Oh, I'm convinced, that, I'm convinced that it is. I'm just okay. saying that it's not all about the city. Right. But it was, this was the right city at the right time. The, if you're sitting on a few million dollars and someone said to you, Ms. Gaddis, if you give me one million dollars today, I'll pay you 5% for the next 10 years, and you can cash out. If you don't want to continue to receive the 5%, you can cash out. At that point, you have to decide, whoa, I'm receiving $50,000 a year on money that was sitting in a bank doing nothing. Hmm, I'm guaranteed to get this money. So there are buildings downtown that need to be renovated. You take the money you raise, you renovate the bill, $35 million. You renovate the buildings and you convince a tenant who's out in the suburbs to move downtown. And you convince them to do that over and over again. We just described the basic principles behind Dan Gilbert's move. And all those who came together decided we're going to bring people downtown again. Now, is it altruistic? Altruistic? 
No, not exactly. You're convincing people who have money in L.A. and all over the place that the best place for you to put this money and get this guaranteed return is Detroit. Now, someone still has to deliver on the, on the money, right? The 5% has to come in and it has to continue. Well, you renovate a building, you bring tenants down, the money comes. And that's kind of what's happening with the city of Detroit, is that people are investing in Detroit because it's the right city at the right time. Let's and go. there are a lot of great cities that are doing things. Dallas is just growing at phenomenal pace. It's one of the you know, 10,000 new people move to the Dallas-Fort Worth area every single week. 10,000 new people. Can you, what happens when that starts happening here in the Detroit area? When new people start saying, I want to move to Detroit, they're going to rent those places that are being built just as fast as they can be built. We've got William on the line from West Bloomfield. Hi, William. Yes, Mr. Liddell. Let me ask you a question that uh, I shouldn't ask. Okay. But what can be done collectively so that black folks don't stay in a low economic status Year in, year out, century in, century out, etc., etc., etc. What can be done nationally? Because we seem to be caught in an economic deprivation fix and can't get out of it collectively now. There are those that you know, have, have basically moved on and moved out, but I'm talking about collectively. That's a question that needs to be answered. I don't know who to go to to answer. Let me just say this here. The first thing we need is a place that you can see capital from, right? Mm -hmm. So we need a black center for capital to be invested and turned over. All right? Detroit has all the makings for that. You know, we have a company here that's a broker dealer, which I just happen to be the one God blessed to own it. So we have the makings for everything we need. We just need people to, to, to stand, rally behind it. So the first step is you need a place that you can collect the capital. Mm -hmm. So let's just call it a black fund, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. So you need a black fund first. And once you get this black fund, the next thing you need is you need a study group. You need a focus group, someone who can just, they, they get paid to do research to figure out what should this black area that the black, what should the black fund be investing in? And they should be able to, I should be able to, every single business that I read off of Mildred was a Jewish owned business. Founded by a Jewish person who went to a Jewish fund to get the funding to get started. So if we can get to where we can name off black fund companies that we can name that were funded by this black fund, all of a sudden it creates jobs for our community, creates jobs for our youth, a lot of those companies are like, man, you can't even imagine when they're going to go out of business. You, you know, can't imagine uh, when it's going to happen. Why? Wow. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. Thank God I'm on social security attention. <laughs> but there's two, there's, there's two people, not two people, but in this black economic institution you talk about, mm -hmm. I'm afraid that if you let ministers and and elected officials in it, you're in trouble. Well, keep in mind, who is Donald Trump surrounding himself with? Capitalists. Billionaires, right? Right. And why? Because these people can't be bought. They already have, they already know what it's like to rent a yacht, spend a million dollars just for the weekend. They already know what that's like. So when yeah. you get people who already know what that's like, you're not dealing with them trying to steal from the same people they're supposed to be protecting. Yeah, yeah. Well, where are you going to find those kind of people in our, among our people? They're there. They're there. Yeah, well, I'd sure like to know. Well, they just need you to do the rally call. <laughs> so the rallying call starts with you, William. It starts with you making a decision that this is something that you have put your money behind. Mm -hmm. Listen, if, if you would take 10% of your, uh, your, we won't call it your black tide, okay? If you take your black tithe and you say, I'll start this thing, that's where it starts. But everybody listening has to make a decision that they're sick and tired of just the same old, same old every single year. I was at a, uh, a committee meeting at Grove's 
and they were talking, it was black students gathered there, and they were talking about the reality that they're going to they're gonna migrate out to college or into a, a, a white world, basically, mm. and that none of them would ever go to work for a black-owned company. And they, you know, they couldn't even imagine, in spite of having a black president just left, they couldn't even imagine a world where all the employees walking around inside the company were black. It, it wasn't even within the imagination, right? Mm -hmm. And I wanted to stand up and say, hey, guys, uh, that's not only imaginable, I live in that world every single day. And even though I have white employees, they're the ones out of state. The employees here in the Detroit office are all black. They look like the majority of this city. So I'm just letting you know that their kids can't even imagine it because they don't see it. You know what, what, what they imagined was the way I felt years ago when I graduated. I thought about having black institution, walk into the offices with a briefcase, just large insurance companies, the imagination. And yeah, I, I can appreciate that. Yeah. So um, yeah, I do think the day is coming. President Obama gave us a huge gift on his way out the door. It's called crowdfunding. Crowdfund crowdfunding makes it possible for individuals who are on a pension and social security to donate $25 to that black fund that we're talking about. And they'll get a return on it, but like Mildred said, they're not just investing for the return, they're investing for the future. I'd like to get some information on that. Yeah, crowdfunding, you can Google it. And you know, our office has a lot of information about it, but yeah, Google it, learn a little bit for yourself. Hey, learn just enough to be dangerous, William. And then and we can help you right the way. Crowd. Crowdfunding? Yes, crowdfunding. Okay, good. I'll check that out. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks, William. We'll be right back. If you have any questions about your money and the future of it, give us a call here at 568-1200. Welcome to W.